In today's video, we will take a deep look at an important Java concept, exception handling. And the topics that we will be covering are what is an exception, types of exceptions, checked and unchecked exceptions, exception hierarchy in Java, how to handle exceptions, handling multiple exceptions, exception propagation, and finally block. After the end of this video, you will be equipped with this topic such that you can not only use it effectively, but also answer most of the questions around it. An exception is an event or an error condition that occurs during the execution of a program. An exception interrupts the normal flow of execution of a program. An example is, define a method that takes a string argument and prints its length. Call this method with a null value. Run this program. Look. We get an exception and the name of exception is null pointer exception since we tried to call a method on a null object. Look at the message. This is called the exception stack trace which shows the entire sequence starting from the source of exception till the source of execution. As said earlier, an exception interrupts a normal flow of execution. This means that if a statement raises an exception, the statements written after it are not executed. If the exception is not handled properly, let us verify. Write a print statement after the line which generates an exception. Run the program. Look, this statement did not execute. All exceptions can be classified into three categories checked exceptions, unchecked exceptions, and error. Checked exceptions are those that you need to handle or declare while writing code. Since this is checked by the compiler at the compile time, these are called checked exceptions. Examples are file not found exception, IO exception, etc. Unchecked exceptions occur due to programmatic errors such as calling a method on null object or accessing an array index more than its length. These exceptions are raised at runtime or execution time. Hence, these are called runtime exceptions. Since these exceptions arise at runtime, they cannot be checked by the compiler. Examples are null pointer exception, array index out of bounds exception, etc. Third type of exceptions are those that are not in control of the developer and arise out of external conditions such as out of memory error, stack overflow error, etc. These are called errors. All exception classes extend throwable, which contains the message or the reason of exception. Throwable is extended by exception and error. Exception represents the events generated by the application while errors are not in application control. Runtime exception is a child class of exception and represents the exceptions generated by programming errors. Exception and its child classes are called checked exceptions while runtime exception and its child classes are called unchecked exceptions. This is a very commonly asked question in interviews, the difference between checked and unchecked exception. And now you know the answer. In Java, exceptions are handled by placing the statements inside try block, followed by a catch block. Catch block contains the exception type that we need to handle. The statements that need to be placed inside try block are decided by the programmer. So, if as a developer you think that a statement can generate an exception, then surround it inside a try block followed by the catch block. Let's see this practically. Create a file reader object to read a file. Now, if you look at the compilation error, it is asking you to handle file not found exception. This is because file not found is a checked exception and as I said earlier, checked exceptions are forced to handle by the compiler. To handle an exception, wrap this code inside a try block, followed by a catch block with the exception that needs to be handled. Import this. This reference variable will be an instance of file not found exception if an exception is thrown from this block. We can print the exception trace or an error message if we like. So, e.printStack trace. Run this. Look. It prints the entire trace along with the reason that this exception occurred. We can also use the getMessage method of exception object to get the reason. Look, we got the cause of this exception. 
This is how we handle an exception in Java. At times, a code block might generate multiple types of errors. For example, let's read a value using this file reader. Store it in a variable. Look at the compilation error. It is asking you to handle IO exception. This is because while reading a file, an IO exception might arise. And the reason that the compiler is forcing you to handle this is because IO exception is also a checked exception. So, to handle multiple exceptions, add another catch block with the type of exception that you need to handle. If these statements generate a file not found exception, then it will be handled by this catch block. Otherwise, it will be handled by this catch block. Now, here comes a question. Can we change the order of these exception blocks? Let us change and find out. Cut this block and paste it above file not found exception. We get an error and it says unreachable catch block for file not found exception. The reason that we get this error message is because file not found exception is a child class of the IO exception. We can check this here. While adding multiple catch blocks, you need to remember one thing. If there is any parent child relationship between the exception classes in different catch blocks, then the child class must be above the parent class. And the reason is that the parent exception type is capable of catching the child exceptions as well. And if IO exception has already handled file not found exception, then there is no use of this block. And hence the error. So, even if we remove this block and run it, we get the same error trace. Undo this change and change file not found exception to exception. Again, we get unreachable block error for IO exception. This is because exception is the parent class of IO exception, and when this block has already handled IO exception, then there is no need for this block. So, the bottom line is that with multiple catch blocks, the catch block handling the child exception type must be above the catch block handling the parent exception type. If there is no relationship between the exception types, then the order of catch blocks does not matter. That is all for this video. In the coming parts of this video, we will understand other important concepts related to exception handling, such as exception propagation, finally block, throw and throws keywords, etc.